if you listen to the fat bastard. I didn't play high school ball, even though my coach's name was Harvey Stoller. It was Thomas A. Edison Vocational and Technical High School. I played there my senior year. I was in a basketball tournament at Fashion Institute of Technology where I dropped 27 points and got a scholarship because the coach came calling me after that and what have you. If you listen to him, I never had a scholarship to Winston-Salem State, even though it's on the books. Just call the university. But this man will tell you I'm lying. Did everyone see Stephen A. Smith's response to Jason Whitlock? He even went so far as to say my autobiography, where I talk about my mother, my father, my sisters, the business, my hiring and firing and rehiring at ESPN. I didn't write it. I didn't write my own memoir, which, by the way, is a New York Times bestseller. Something he wouldn't know anything about. Did you know that it's now on paperback? It just came out yesterday on paperback. Do you know that you could go to Amazon.com, straightshooterbook.com, or a bookstore nearest you to get my book in paperback? Do you know that when people are normally selling 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 copies. I've sold over 400,000. Did you know, did you know, did you know? But he will tell you, I didn't write it. He's seen my writing. Really? Smith would go off and seemingly confirm a report from Deadspin we brought to you previously. In it, journalist Greg Howard reported Whitlock tried recruiting Howard Bryant, Jamil Hill, ta Coates, and Stephen A., None wanted to work with him. The key to all of this are the anecdotes that Stephen A. gives us. Here's a big one. While you were on Blaze TV, spewing that bull to people, did you tell them that? Did you tell them how you stood outside, outside of first take begging me to talk to you? Did you tell them that once the same article in Deadspin came out, Weeks later, you wrote a lengthy apology to me in an email begging me to forgive you, pointing out how you were betrayed by this particular writer. So you know how I must feel that you betrayed me. Did you tell the folks that you. Did you tell them? You fat piece of. Let's pause for a moment. The picture that we could envision of Jason Whitlock standing outside of First Take Studio, pleading with Smith to forgive him in his fedora and suit jacket is hilariously pathetic. It's similar to the story Mike Wise, a former writer at The Undefeated, shared. Whitlock called him sobbing. It was the first time I ever heard him cry, Wise said. From Jeff Perlman, the public humiliation of having his baby, as in being the main editor, of the undefeated taken away clearly hit him hard in one stamp of the fingers whitlock went from being the king of a highly anticipated website to a flop if you're just a normal person this level of setback is hard but if you're whitlock the type of guy who twice pushes himself for the pulitzer that's true who cites his own work as must read who takes pleasure in the shortcomings of colleagues it has to be 100 tyson fury blows to the gut you want me to bring up the other writers that wouldn't work for you why it took you nearly two years to get an article out because you ran that so bad you were running it into the ground. What a disgrace you were to John Skipper, the former boss of ESPN or the host of others. Smith then gets into how years back he decided to stand up for Jason Whitlock. And then when Smith was suspended, Whitlock did the inverse. Here's what he did. There was speculation. Stephen A. may or may not have used the N-word live on the air. Smith would not appreciate Whitlock's words. So what were they? I found them. And I want to read some of them to you. This is Whitlock for the second time in less than a year. 
the black beard paid to mask Skip Bayless's blatant N-word baiting uttered N-word please on a national television platform allegedly reserved for non-profane professional discussion. For years, ESPN pitted a parade of attention-starved, mostly black stooges against Skip to legitimize and sanitize Bayless over, Bayless's rather over-the-top attacks on T.O., Chad Johnson, LeBron, and all the other low-hanging black fruit Skip could reach from his debate chair. The parade of stooges failed to properly protect Bayless. You could still see he was an insecure, disingenuous version of Glenn Beck. Absolutely incredible, and maybe some foreshadowing, because where, did J- where does Jason Whitlock work right now? The Blaze, right? Who owns that? Glenn Beck. Full circle. Enter Stephen A. Smith, Whitlock writes, desperate to reemerge as a high six figures TV celebrity, desperate for his next hit from the TV crack pipe. That's an insane line to write because Whitlock purposely inserted Smith, a black man, to an epidemic the U.S. government pushed onto its citizens, in turn playing up a horrendous stereotype. It is shameful, terrible. And where could we find these words? FoxSports.com. They allowed this to print. Tells you a lot. Smith campaigned for the role of Skip's beard, Whitlock wrote. Recognizing that its black viewers couldn't resist Skip's bait, ESPN doubled down making Smith an equal partner in the show and reimagining First Take as the black barbershop of sports talk, the rap music bumpers, the black eye candy female host. That's Carrie Champion, by the way. The guest appearances by rappers and Smith are all an attempt to make Skip's N-word baiting palatable, marketable, and justifiable. The show has been dumbed down and ghettoized. Wow. Knowing the backstory as well, that according to Stephen A, he went public in defending Whitlock, and then the slither of a chance is all Whitlock needs in order to say, listen to me, don't, he's not the worthy dude, I'm the worthy dude. That's an incredible heel turn. He then says in his own column that Skip Bayless is not the villain of First Take, but it's Smith. Because, his words, dancing for Bayless is easy, being half of ESPN's hip-hop and word-dropping sports show makes you more popular with celebrities. It's fun. That's totally out of spite, man. It's out of spite. My point is, in bringing up all of that, Jason Whitlock pounced on it. Because that's what he does. You see, what he does is he's the one that puts himself in front of white folks. The white folks, not all white folks, not most white folks, but the white folks that dare we say may have a problem with black folks. He says, I'm your man. That's what he does. You think I'm lying? Ask ESPN. Ask Fox. Ask the Kansas City Star. Ask them all. Smith then lists media veterans who can confirm what he is saying. One of them was Jamil Hill, who was asked about it, and she responded. Stephen A. told the truth. Old boy tried to recruit a bunch of us to do some work for what was then the undefeated, and we did not want to work with him. As a black man. I often told y'all, I cannot imagine as a black man, knowing our history, anything worse than a white supremacist. That is until Jason Whitlock came along. He's worse than them. He is the worst most despicable, lion, no good, fat human being I have ever known in my life. Here's how we know he feels this way. I have a contract that I negotiated with ESPN and I signed in 2015. 
I don't know of anyone who has this in their contracts. I had it in my contract and I have a copy of it where it specifically stipulates that I never work with Jason Whitlock. It's in writing. No wonder you didn't see him on first take. Um, you didn't see him on Undisputed with Skip Bayless either. Skip Bayless wouldn't allow him on there. You didn't see him on Numbers Never Lie either. Jamel Hill and Michael Smith wouldn't allow him on there. There is another name he drops, and that is Chris Broussard, a well-respected journalist, covered the NBA for many, many, many years. Still does, of course, to this day, but he's gone from ESPN and many other outlets. Now he's on uh, the show with Nick Wright on Fox Sports 1. I have disagreed with some of his rhetoric. Do I hate him? No, not at all. And it seems like Chris Broussard, according to Stephen A., doesn't really hate anybody as well. But there is one person he cannot stand, according to Stephen A. Who is it? You guessed it. Jason Whitlock. Look around. Don't y'all notice why black people scurry away whenever this roach of an individual is around named Whitlock? Because we know what he is. We know what he is. He then issues this warning to the blaze. Be careful that you don't get yourself stained and stenched by Whitlock. He can do that to people. He is the worst. He's not ethical. He's not moral. Clearly based over what I've told you about me, he's also not factual most of the time. He will lie. He will denigrate. And he will turn against anyone to serve his own good. The real reason he's there is because he can't get a job anywhere else. He hasn't burnt bridges. He's napalmed them. Call Eric Shanks and Charlie Dixon at Fox. Call Jimmy Pitaro, Burke Magnus, Dave Roberts, Norby Williamson at ESPN. Call him. Call him. Call John Skipper and Metalock Media. I'm giving you names. More from Stephen A. in a moment. I got to be honest. This is a feeling of vindication because we have put together many reports over the years where I just saw through Jason Whitlock's BS. And he has, to his credit, left us a cookie trail of information. Just loads of it. Where it doesn't take a brain surgeon to see what he's saying, go through the data, follow the receipts and say, well, that's wrong. Well, that's off. And with him, I believe where there's smoke, there's fire. The thing is with what he has done, especially the wrong way, it's a forest fire. That's his career. Kansas city folks hate him. I can't tell you how many times we have done a piece on Whitlock and the Kansas City people come out in droves saying we hated him, we could not stand him, we, we, we were overjoyed when he left. The ESPN folks hate him. Fox Sports people don't ever discuss him. That's on purpose. He couldn't even last at OutKick. Him and Clay Travis had a falling out. He hardly gets run on Fox News anymore unless something comes up where they could use him as the guy to make news to say, yeah, you know, Tyree Nichols, you know what the problem is? Single black mothers. That's the problem. Outrageous, erroneous statements. And yet when he had the falling out at OutKick, he got even more desperate and more desperate and more desperate. So what did he do? He was probably recruited or recommended to jo go join Charlie Kirk's TP USA to spew anti-black rhetoric for MAGA fame. And where is he now? With Glenn Beck in the blaze. Glenn Beck gives him the stamp of approval. He is a shell of a writer. He is a shell of a man. He has no dignity. He has no pride. He's soulless, which he's even admitted to on his show. Honestly, I pity him. This same Jason Whitlock 
that wants to talk smack about me is the same Jason Whitlock that wanted to hire me. It's the same Jason Whitlock that stood outside doors trying to get me and coax me into even having a conversation with them because they knew I was so disgusted with him, presumably after he hit a strip club. Because we all know ain't nobody trying to go out with him. Okay? The same Jason Whitlock, that guy, is the same guy that sent both Dan Lebertard and Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas, the two-time champion, the Hall of Famer. That same Jason Whitlock sent those folks to talk to me. Please, is there something that could be worked out? Can you forgive him? Can you talk to him? My words and my promise to them was that I want nothing to do with him. I will never hurt him from getting opportunities, but I'll be damned if I'm going to help him by being associated with him in any way. And if you thought Stephen A was done cooking, well, he went further. My name for Jason Whitlock is religiously Cain. C-A-I-N. You see, a lot of black folks, we talk about how we're the original man on the face of this earth. Well, that means Cain was the original murderer because he's the one, according to the Bible, who killed Abel. That's Jason Whitlock. There is nothing good about him. Absolutely nothing. He then talks about, which I have stated many times because it was the pure feeling I got from watching, listening, seeing what Whitlock has done. He's jealous. He's jealous he couldn't make it at ESPN. He's sad that he was let go by ESPN because he was a terrible, terrible leader at Black Grantland. And all of this, I said it previously, I'll double down, I'll triple down. He's doing it out of spite. He's mad at those people who rightfully cut the cord with Whitlock's tenure because he was bad. The unearthed audio recordings that Deadspin obtained, go listen to them. They're terrible. Everyone knew it. The only person that didn't know it was him. He'd give anything to have my job. He'd give anything to have my resume. I do pick up at least 1,500 subscribers per day. I am at over 460,000. I just started nine months ago with my team. You've been at it, whether it's May of 2021 or July of 2021. You've been at it since then. I've already surpassed you. Sound familiar? Because it's what I've been doing. To you your entire career this is this is brutal at this point in the fight the referee would step in to stop it you were a great writer your mistake was you started talking and worse wanting to be seen while you were talking which is why your quality and your value plummeted because when we see you and we listen to you we know how worthless you are he's the dude that's gonna have a funeral and Ain't going to be no Paul Barris. Might be two people to show up. He's that dude. He is the absolute worst. In conclusion, Jason Whitlock is a lonely, sad little dude. That's how I view him. And someone recently brought this to my attention. I did a TikTok a while back where I criticized his comments about the Tyree Nichols case because it was just beyond stupid. And then I went over his history with Black Grantland. And I cited the Deadspin report. And I cited other places where he has had a falling out because that's just what he does. And what did he say in return about me? He called me, he didn't address anything I said. 
nothing. None of the criticisms about his tenure at ESPN, his tenure at Fox Sports, his tenure at OutKick, his current tenure at The Blaze, his, oh, believe me, and I'm going to blame uh, other black people for the Tyree Nichols case, anything. He didn't address any of his rhetoric. What he did was attack me to say, yeah, he's been stalking me. Brother, I'm not stalking you. I'm holding you accountable because you won't do it your damn self. Speaking of stalking, LeBron James was stalked when he was in LA. His house got spray painted with the N-word. And what was your response to that stalking? Rich people aren't affected by racism. If you are an affluent black person, you don't suffer from racism. I don't even think you know the definition of stalking. Having a critique of something you said that is incorrect is not stalking. It's saying, you're wrong. Here's why you're wrong. Everything I do is being cited by something. For Jason Whitlock, it is shoot at the hip by any means necessary. The problem with that is he is not capable of being that guy to spontaneously say something in a show format that will make a lick of sense. And even if you are a Stephen A. hater, I view this the same way that I view the public going after Aaron Rodgers. It, it is not about necessarily being a stan for Stephen A. It is the loathsome community feeling we have towards Jason Whitlock.